So do you have parents joining in virtually as well, uh, Deepak ji? Virtually, mostly virtually, yes. We have. Namaste, dear parents. Welcome to this session on IB International Baccalaureate, how it can help our children to excel in life and how it is futuristic, how it is connected to NEP and how and what we do in sunshine with IB education. We have with us Mr. Mahesh Balakrishnan, who is a development recognition manager, India and Nepal. He's based in Singapore. Mr. Mahesh has an extensive background in sales and marketing and has over two decades of global business development experience across multiple industries. His experience includes working with regulators, policy makers, and industry leaders, a passionate teacher and mentor. Mahesh brings in a decade of plus of experience in education. He has worked across higher and primary education, online learning, and technology and education in the fields of simulation and gamified learning. He also conducts corporate workshops. He has been active in student mentoring and providing them various career path pathways to higher education. The students who have been mentored by him have been admitted to institutions like the John Hopkins, Oxford, National University of Singapore, Nanyang Technological University, Singapore Management University, and others. He has advised and mentored 
startup founders in areas of business planning and market expansion, including healthcare, edtech, fintech, e-commerce, and others. He is instrumental in Asia's first and first food ordering apps within app payment. Recently, he has enabled a collaboration with Delhi government and one of the kind agreement to spur career-related education in India. Mr. Mahesh holds an MSc in technopreneurship entrepreneurship and an innovation from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore, and an MBA in marketing from Jivaji University, India. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. Mahesh Balakrishnan from IB, and right now he's in Singapore. Little ground rules before we start. Please keep your mics on mute. If you have any questions, please put them in the chat box, and we'll be happy to answer at the end of the session. Mostly all questions will be answered, but still if some remain, we will be more than happy to address them at the end of the session. Over to you, Mr. Mahesh, and welcome to this session, all parents and Mr. Mahesh. Thank you, I Deepak. And over to Mr. Mahesh now. Yeah. Thank you, Deepak ji. Namaste. And uh, good morning to all the parents, the staff, and the management of Sunshine Worldwide School Goa, a school I have had the pleasure of visiting when I was in Goa. Okay. So, also wanting to share that we are happy. Tamil New Year, happy ba Baisakhi and whatever festival you are celebrating. Even otherwise, uh, April 14th is a very significant day across India. So welcome again. Thank you for the kind introduction, Deepak ji. Today I'm going to talk about IB programs as frameworks, NEP parallels, and the CP and its relevance. These are all connected in some way or the other. Because the new education policy starts to get implemented from this year, number one. The draft national curriculum framework has been released for feedback by educators. So we are living in very interesting times. And uh, this is also important because the NEP and the national curriculum framework draw on the IB and its programs very, very heavily. So in a way, if you are an IB school, you're automatically aligned with the NEP and to a great extent with the National Curriculum Framework as well, as the Sunshine World School is already a PYP authorized school. They are aligned with the NEP, number one. Number two, they are embarking on the journey of becoming a IB Continuum School with the next program being introduced is the IBCP. Okay. Now, just to inform parents here that the IB Continuum of International Education delivered in over 150 countries, over 7,600 programs, over 5,500 schools in both public sector schools, that means government schools, private schools, and private international schools, including in India. And how do we do that to our mission statement of developing active, compassionate, and lifelong learners. And uh, we are about student-centric learning, which is again the heart of the NEP, okay? Putting the heart, putting the child at the heart of learning, that's very important. And that's why IB talks about two things, approaches to teaching and approaches to learning. If you have visited the Sunshine School, you would have come to know about the IB Learner Profile attributes. These are very, very important. And over a period of time, not just the children, it's also the school staff, the management, and including parents start demonstrating those attributes. Very, very important. And how do schools align globally? Because we talk about local, yet being global, is through the program standards and practices. These are set of guidelines given by the IB for every school to follow. And with the Sunshine School in Goa, you are in good hands. Okay. We have four interesting programs, very wonderful programs. The PYP, the MYP, the DP, and the CP. Okay. The DP and the CP are grade 11 and 12 qualification. And uh, both are accepted 
and recognized by the Association of Indian Universities as equivalent to the grade 12 qualification of the state boards of the CBSC, NIOS, ICSC, and so on and so forth. Happy to share that even the MYP is recognized by AIU and COPSI as an equivalent grade 10 qualification. Now, what happens is when a school progresses from PYP to the middle school, it is scaffolding education, the best practices which they have. So even if the school is not authorized for MYP, it doesn't prevent a school like Sunshine to incorporate the best practices, the pedagogical good elements of the IB into their middle years program. Similarly, from the middle school, this scaffolds into either the DP or the CP. Sunshine School is talking about the future of work, getting ready for future of work. I've seen personally Deepak Ji talking and doing a lot for entrepreneurship. He always is looking at innovation. That's why the IBCP becomes very relevant for the school, the students and the community. I'm happy to share with you that we have a large number of recognition statements from institutions in India, including credits to University of Mumbai colleges and overseas with the IBCP. OK, so please be on the lookout for what. Sunshine School is going to do with the IBCP. OK, it will be very, very interesting. Now, I've talked about NEP. You would have heard of the NEP. You would have read about the NEP. So some elements of the NEP, if you look at it, talks about respect for diversity and local context in curriculum, pedagogy and policy. We are talking about equity and inclusion. In fact, this year IB is itself promoting diversity, equity and inclusion to a great extent. We are telling schools to incorporate DEI in their policies. Schools need to be accessible, more open. Community participation. OK, and uh, IB schools are at the forefront of community participation. Use of technology. My joining you here today and what Deepak ji is doing is using technology. OK, emphasize conceptual understanding, unique capabilities, creative thinking and. Critical thinking, continuous review. So one of the beautiful things about IB is there is continuous review. Even in the MYP, even in the DP, even in the PYP, we have program review cycles. Every five years there is global review, not just people, somebody sitting in some country, including people from India participate in these reviews. They give feedback. That's how IB may be 50 years old, but the programs remain young, futuristic and relevant. On a lighter note, I would like to say this. I'm sure many of you would have seen the movie called Three Idiots and also a movie called Tare Zameen Par. In my opinion, OK, these two movies encompass most of these things which are there on the slide. And I'm happy to share that in the Indian context, an IB education lies in between these two movies. Why? With the PYP, you have concepts and context. Very, very important. People forget context. We also in the IB move children away from rote learning. OK, we are not <clears throat> restricting learning to books and syllabus delivery. You might think why is IB talking about not using books? OK, books are important. We encourage reading. We encourage literacy. Yet we believe that in some ways we need to go beyond books because knowledge is all around us. We need to harness that knowledge. OK, so teachers in IB schools can use. Notes, newspaper articles, resources around them, and because we are also transdisciplinary in nature, OK, we can't rely solely on one or two books. This becomes very important and we have enough data and evidence 
that this approach is helping children, parents, and schools. Again, curriculum and pedagogy in the NEP, they are talking about skill-based curriculum. Okay, very, very important because they realize that students need to get ready for jobs of the future. Okay, the jobs of the future might change, but the skills required for the future, problem solving, critical thinking, working in teams, empathy, all these are very important. And with the IBCP, we have two years of deep diving into a curriculum, which is getting students ready for a career, including pathways to higher education. And the overall thrust of curriculum and pedagogy reform will be to move education system towards real understanding. That's what the NEP is talking about. And if you have been following the IB, you will see that's why the NEP aligns very well with the NEP. Okay, the NEP aligns very well with the IB and its programs. So I've been getting a lot of questions. Okay, on admissions into grade one. Okay, whether six years, when do we have the six years and so on and so forth. So in fact, some states have given permission to schools to have a six months leeway. Okay, so it can be at the beginning of the academic year. It could be at the midpoint or by September. Okay, so, or for one year, there could be concessions depending on which state you are in. But schools are encouraged to follow the national guidelines uh, on the one hand, and also look at how the reforms are changing. And with IB schools, this becomes much easier because we are very well aligned to this structure which is coming on and is getting rolled across the country. Okay, so this is something I want to reassure the parents. With sunshine, with an IB in school, you're already in good hands with the NEP. You don't need to be concerned how the NEP is going to be rolled out, how is it going to affect my school? No. Being an IB school and with the NEP, the way it is structured aligns very well with the NEP. Okay. So just to share with you again, for those who are new to the PYP and even those who are already in the PYP, just as a refresher, we are talking about ages 3 to 12, we are talking about up to class 5, can go up to class 6 as well. Inclusivity, developing the whole child as an inquirer, both in the classroom and in the world outside. We believe that what they learn in the classroom, classroom should be relevant in the world outside. It should not just be bookish knowledge. They should learn to apply and know the concepts and the context. Now, if you look at the NEP, the inquirer word is replaced by the discoverer. Okay. So, discoverer is again based on inquiry led learning. In the early years, we have something called inquiry through play. Okay. You would have heard the concept of play, play based learning, and that is very much there in the IBPYP. Okay. Especially in the early years. Talking about program of inquiry, scope and sequence for six subject areas, and the school supports it. And at the end of grade five, you have the PYP exhibition. Some schools can do exhibition or, in, or kind of an ideal exhibition every year. Okay, so there's a lot of freedom. So the school has the context of local yet global. So it's a transformative and caring approach. We want children to develop a love for lifelong learning. Okay, and we are talking about empowering the teachers to be capable through our professional development and continuous investment in professional development, which I've seen the school do. OK, so you're in good hands there as well. OK, so the IBPYP teachers attend in school workshops, they attend IB workshops and so on and so forth, and we call them professionals. The schools enjoy a flexible framework that adapts to your local culture and context. 
we encourage agency giving choice voice and ownership to the students and assessments is ongoing in the pyp it deepens learning providing opportunities for teachers to reflect student learning the ib pyp report card is a very interesting report card talks about areas of improvement talks about where the students are doing well and assessment in the ib is not about end of the year exams it is ongoing assessment it can be through quizzes it can be through observation it can be through unit test it can be through term exam can be through end of the year exam okay the school knows the context well number one and anyway in our country we are becoming a high stake assessment country we have assessment for everything so we believe that the that what the ib is doing with the pyp in terms of assessment is the best ways to lessen the board uh, lessen the burden on assessment if you look at it with the nep they are talking about easing of examination pattern that is more about grade 11 and 12 and 10 but what they have seen from what the ib is doing and they believe it will help and i think many schools in the public sector in india are now transforming the way they do assessment i have come across many cbsc schools who are not having examinations till grade 3 okay so the local context is very very critical and important and the pyp exhibition we have numerous data points there the students the schools the staff the teachers they all love the pyp exhibition the celebration there are some benefits for schools okay with the ib pyp this is very important again okay so sunshine worldwide school is an ib authorized school it has its own elements which it has brought and the teachers are empowered to become the architect of learning they design lessons which suits their students okay so please don't compare schools that is very important and again there is not too much of reliance on books it is not a bad thing okay if you are thinking if my school or my child is not reading too many books no it is not impacting lessons we have schools in europe who are bagless and bookless okay and they do very well so please be rest assured on that okay i will quickly go to the dp and cp okay so like the nap okay which is talking about multidisciplinary flexibility of choice of subjects school based study critical thinking doing away with academic and the difference between vocational and easing of examination patterns okay this is already there in the ibdp cp where we are preparing students for challenges of life and higher education we are giving them good groups of subject choices okay we are talking about interdisciplinary learning again context and critical thinking and doing away with mugging up and preparing students for concepts and learning in examination patterns and assessment also getting students ready for higher education industry readiness and foundation the usual complaint is that indian graduates are not ready for industry okay we aim to solve that with the ibcp and the ibdp second schools are a very lovely place you would have seen that with sunshine school as well the school loves its children every child is made to feel special in the school but when you go to a college or a university you are on your own you may not even have a connect with your faculty in some cases or in many cases you have new friendships groups and all of that so you become to a great extent an independent learner the ib dp and cp address that in many ways through the way the learning happens in the ib dp and cp so you get ready that's why globally we have seen ibdp and cp students do very well at college and university and especially in the first year of higher education they are the ones who are able to cope up with the rigor of college education so how what is the difference between the ibdp and the ibcp though sunshine school is going for ibcp some of the parents who would have read on the internet about ibdp or they would be familiar with the ibdp okay so the fundamentals of the ibdp remain there in the ibcp 
the subject loads, so to say, are less in the IBCP. So in IBDP, you have six DP subjects, three at a higher level and three at a standard level. In the IBCP, students will do between two to four DP subjects. They will do the IBCP course and they will do a two year deep dive into a career related study. Now, what are the examples of the career related study? Artificial intelligence, data science, sports management, event management, psychology, dietics and nutrition, travel and hospitality management. Okay. So, uh, journalism, there are many, many courses. Student will take one of the course and he or she will deep dive into that course for two years. They will do an industry internship, which is between 15 days to six months okay so they will get practical experience they will get relevant experience yet also do their skilling they will also be academically blended which will help them when they go to university and also help them to discover their passion follow their passion as well that is very important uh, just to give you an example in the ibcp core we have something called the reflective project okay Students can write a 3000 word essay, a critical reflection in the reflective project, or a student can do a thousand word reflection and build a 12 page website, or they can do an interview of, say, a CEO of a company, 30 minutes interview. That is a valid submission for the IBCP reflective project. In fact, with the changes which are coming up, like I said, IB keeps evolving. By 25, 26, a student would even be able to submit a business plan for his startup as part of a reflective project, and that's a valid submission. That's how IBCP is an interesting program, getting you ready for higher education as well as for a life and work. Students can take a gap year if they want. Globally, students take gap year after 12 years of education or 14 years of education. In India, we don't. We, we take gap year for NEET or JE preparation. In fact, the IBCP is a good opportunity for CP for students to take a break, go to industry, do their startup, see the world, come back to higher education. Possibly that's one way students can explore themselves. Okay, so the university life, industry, or startup, or even getting into academic writing and thinking are very much possible. OK, so people would have heard of the extended essay. It compares very well with the reflective project. The extended, in extended essay, students would do a 4,000 words write up. In the theory of knowledge, they will do a 1,600 word critique. Here, students will learn about project management, time management. They'll talk about body language. They will talk to develop themselves through community and community service, as well as take up one language which is not native to them. Okay, which will help them in their careers and future life. That's why it is a holistic program. Very relevant for the future. Okay, and again, slightly different model, but just to repeat so that you understand it well. Students will take between two to four DP courses. Students will do the CP course from here. All students will need to do. So if I'm a student who is doing in AI, I still have to do the CP core. If I'm a student who's doing IBCP in sports management, I still have to do the core. And then I will do the career related studies in sports management. Somebody else will do the IBCP in AI and so on, so forth. And this is again a program which is recognized by the AIU. Students will be eligible for the common law admission test or CLAT. They'll be eligible to apply for NEET. They'll be eligible to apply for JE. They'll be eligible for CUET and other college admissions. And again, uh, you would be uh, some of you or all of you might be following the IPL today. Cybersecurity is very important. You'd be getting all those messages from your banks not to reveal your OTP or password. We have the Indian Soccer League. We have people going on to join the A.R. Rahman Conservatory of Music. You see all this, what is happening is new age careers have emerged. New 
new age careers have emerged. It is becoming competitive, yet a lot of opportunities are emerging. Okay, so students stand to benefit if they follow their passion, build a good portfolio because new age universities are also entering India. I'll talk about that in a while. Today, American style universities have come into India. Plaksha, Flame, Freya, Shulini, they're all research oriented universities. They're encouraging innovation. Apart from that, now under the NEP, foreign campuses can set up in India. In fact, Deakin University is the first one going to set up its campus in Gandhinagar. Okay, so foreign universities are coming in. The IB makes for an interesting transition from school life to university and for universities to scaffold into employment or industry. Okay, all of you would have heard of chat GPT. Okay, it's a rage at this moment. But if you look at AI, AI is not new. Okay, today it is there across domains like healthcare, manufacturing, banking, not just in technology. Okay, even some of your apps like Swiggy and Zomato are using AI to a great extent. Okay, pharmacy, Apollo app, NetMeds, if you are into all these things. Okay, insurance. Today you can buy insurance on the fly if you log into something like Digit and all. Okay, so there are many examples where you can use. So, how does the IBCP stand out? Okay, so again, if you look at it, some of the options in the career related studies remain AI, data science, design. The school will not offer all of these. We encourage schools to take one or two, which is very relevant and then go on and then maybe they can add on. But what is the experience in the classroom and outside? We have industry internships, we have master classes, we have Harvard case studies, we have flexibility, industry exposure, universities pathway with academic credit. Okay, now one thing which is very important is don't think that with all this, the academic part is being diluted. No, it is to a great extent applied learning. Okay, students will enjoy those people who are leaders in the school, there, there will always be that child who puts his hand for drama, leadership, okay, becoming the class prefect. They are the kind of students, apart from the academically inclined students, all of them will love the IBCP because it gives that academically inclined child to thrive. It also gives that applied learning child to thrive, who grasp concepts, cannot write long, yet two projects, through collaboration, through reflection, by doing projects, they learn. Their method of learning and imbibing is very different. Those students will also thrive with the IBCP. Okay, so again, what are the benefits for students and parents with the IBCP? To develop skills and competencies for lifelong learning, practical real world approaches, approaches to learning. This is again very important. The world has changed after COVID. It's no longer the same. You would have seen that, right? New jobs are being created. The way we approach things, working from home, working with teams globally, all that is now in the mainstream. Okay. Offers an alternative pathway to pursue higher education, apprenticeship, or employment. Again, you are going to get multiple of qualifications. For example, a student who is doing IBCP with WACP will get international diploma in say sports management at the end of grade 11, international advanced diploma in sports management at the end of grade 12, or international diploma in artificial intelligence and international advanced diploma in artificial intelligence along with the IBC. So you get multitude of certification as well. This is going to be very, very relevant. And uh, you would have pathways to work or to higher education. So I was talking about some of the universities which have come in and are recognizing the IBCP. Apart from the AIU equivalence itself, we have University of Mumbai, which is accepting the IBCP. We have Indian Institute of Management Indore, Atlas Skill Tech, uh, Atlas Skill Tech University, the Skills University out of Mumbai. Uh, Ronnie Skruwala has set this up. Laksha University, very interesting university bringing the best kind of Western education into India. It's a tech university. 
So they have a technology program even in for biological sciences. Okay, they accept the IBCP. Ashoka University is a well-known university, World University of Design, and many, many more. Okay. Again, we have direct pathways to some of the programs. You would have heard of uh, Luke Cotino. So he's involved in the nutrition and dietics program. He has done that. It has got pathways to institutions both in India and overseas. OK, so just to give you some information on the equivalence for the IBCP. OK, so for IBCP, you have a requirement that students need to do two DP subjects with one at a higher level, at least for engineering or medicine. You need to do three DP subjects with one at a higher level. But all the requirements for the CP core and the career related studies need to be completed. When I talk about non technical higher education, it is BA, BSc, BBA. OK, just for clarification. OK, like I said, that's good recognition. Today we have schools in small towns as well. And we have a good amount of students. IB is growing. We now have schools even in the public sector. We have a PYP school as a uh, BMC school in Mumbai as well. Okay. Thank you very much. I will take questions now. I will request uh, Deepak ji to moderate if possible. Thank you, Mahesh ji. That was very informative. And I'm sure most of our parents must have really got the answers to their questions. But still, if some parents have questions, please feel free to ask your questions. You can type in the chat box or you can unmute and ask. So yes, uh, Deepak ji has uh, uh, answered that question about uh, NEP. It is the national education policy. Some also call it the new education policy because it has just been announced after almost 30, 40 years was announced in 2020 and they gave time for implementation starting this year 2023. Yes, Tanish ji, please unmute yourself and ask. Uh, yes, namaste, Mr. Khaitan. Uh, thank you for this uh, talk. It was very informative. Uh, but as you're aware, my son is already in the 11th. So uh, do we see, uh, how early do we see uh, the IB program implemented into the higher classes? So we will. We are already in the process of uh, uh, getting registered now for the CP program, which will take about six to eight months. And next academic year, we'll be able to admit children for the 11th. Because it's a two year program and we will not be able to do it in the 12th as already Neil is in 11th right now. And uh, we will not be able to offer to him, but I'm sure that we'll be able to give some of the practices to Neil in the 12th. That's what you would like yes, to add anything. You. Yeah, good, good that you brought it up. Uh, whenever you are ready, what we will do from the coming academic year, we'll have some of your students be able to of grade 11 be, be attending the master classes. It happens on a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. They will benefit out of it. That'll be really nice. Yes. Anyone Thank else? You. Any other questions? More the questions, better it is for all of us to understand the IB program yeah. and get clarity May on I ask? What, what we are. Yeah, sure, please. Uh, so uh, just to understand the uh, various le levels up to primary, it is PYP, which is primary year program. And yes. then what are the consecutive uh, classes as you go higher called? Or what is middle school called? M middle school is MYP from grade 6 to grade Middle 10. year program. Uh, but I would, uh, I, would, I would qualify one statement here that uh, schools can also extend their PYP up to grade 7. So it's PYP, middle year program, and then IB for two IBDP years. IBDP or the CP, yeah. Right, yes, thank you. So there was a question in the chat box that is, as uh, SW is going to take MYP. As uh, Mahesh ji, I think you had already answered. Probably Dinesh ji may have joined a little later. You can just throw some light on that, that we are already the methodology. Yes, yeah. yes. so uh, 
Sunshine Worldwide School is already has the practices as a IB pedagogical aspects in the whole school. They are going to become an IB continuum school. OK, so you can be rest assured on that. And uh, while they have the other program, those elements of the pedagogical aspects are still are already there in the school. Yeah, so we will start. We have already done PYP, so PYP is still sixth. But now Mahesh told me that we can go up to the seventh. So we will do that. And then probably we will uh, start with the CP, IBCP, and gradually we will come to the MYP because MYP probably will not be uh, very relevant in the in the sense of examination. It's more important in the uh, sense of pedagogy and methodology. Yeah, Deepak ji, I want to take one question. Uh, OK, yeah, I just thought I'll uh, elaborate on that. So one of the questions was. Uh, is the IB and the CBC syllabus same or are there any differences? OK, I'll touch upon it a little with the NEP coming in. Even CBC is changing. OK, but because they are a national uh, board and they are a very large board, they are also present overseas. Now what happens is with the IB, uh, it is like I said, concept learning and contextual learning. It's very objective in nature. The other curriculum while being good is subjective and is syllabus oriented. That's why what happens is many schools rote learning creeps in. This is the main main difference between IB and CBSC. Also, the CBSC uh, curriculum is also a good curriculum. OK, uh, if you look at it between grade 11 and 12, we have done mapping between NCRT and uh, IB, IBDP. What we have seen is there's not much of a difference beyond 15 percent. In some ways we are better, some ways they are better. It is the way IB has its pedagogy around student centered learning. That is what makes it stand out. Does it answer question, uh, Deepak ji? Thank you, Mahesh ji. <clears throat> and I would like to just add, I don't know whether it's the right forum to add, but most of the changes in NEP have been also taken from the IB yeah. practices. So gradually, CBSC will also move towards that. <clears throat> They've also started talking about the semester system uh, where we have to take in the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, you have to take credits, and then you have to also talk about all the other things like the CAS, they have also started talking about service. They have also ta started talking about the uh, vocational subjects which are important in the 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. So it is moving towards it. They are also thinking about critical thinking and creative thinking and analysis. So it is all moving in the same direction as what IB already is. That's why I love to say that if you're an IB authorized school, you're already a NEP aligned school. Yeah, so CBSC will move there maybe in a couple of years. We are already there. OK, uh, before you take the next question from the chat, I will say something. Does sure. IB education focus on 21st century skills? Very much, very much. OK, we always keep evolving. It is student centric learning. OK, and uh, people ask me this question all the time. What happens if students switch from IB to CBSC? If their parents are relocating, OK? I will tell you that if you are in the IB, you know you learn how to learn. That is very important. And if you are not falling into the bad habits or such, this concept of learning how to learn and learning concepts, key concepts, applying the, that in your day-to-day -day life will help you in any curriculum. And even when you make the transition into higher education, those good habits, those good ways of learning will always benefit you. I have seen it even with my kids who have moved from curriculum to curriculum, OK, and school to school as well, that those good habits for they learn remains with them. So please be rest assured as a parent that will your child be able to make the transition. Question whether school sunshine will go bagless. Uh, we are already ready. I think the bag is because of the parents want their children to bring some books home or to get the notebooks home because they want to know what the child is doing in school. We don't want the child to take it back and do anything like that. The homework which is given is also very generic where they can visit a supermarket or visit a place to know what is happening there. Observation skills and if they have to carry maximum will be one notebook 
which they may have to do and some do some written work if required. So we can absolutely go bagless if all of you are with us. Uh, Shristi, you have a question, I believe. Um, hello, Namaste, sir. Namaste. Uh, thank you so, so much for the lovely session. Sir, I missed the beginning 10 minutes. So if you're repeating something, please uh, pardon me uh, if it has already been answered. No worry. Uh, my question is regarding uh, the textbooks. It may sound a little conventional, but I wanted to, my schools, my children have been to IG, uh, Cambridge board also, and uh, I have studied from CBSE, uh, but I see that IB does not have any uh, books per se, the curriculum books I have not seen. So I just wanted to understand the concepts because in Cambridge, I have seen the books they are really nicely documented. It is not just uh, theory. The, the, there are very practical exercises given there, which are very interesting also. So I just wanted to understand the, the whole theory that why there is no uh, textbook per se. Okay, good. Good question. And I touched upon it in my presentation right at the beginning, but I'll tell it again <laughs> in a very different manner. Okay, it's okay. One is uh, we believe that learning should not be limited by books. Knowledge is all around us. We need to harness it. The problem which can schools and teachers can fall into the trap very easily is about syllabus delivery. Okay, uh, books encourage syllabus delivery. If you have a syllabus, you are delivering syllabus. Okay, while I think the whole idea about schools is to deliver learning rather than syllabus. Okay, it's very, very important. You will realize it. One. Second thing is, IB doesn't say don't use reference book or reference material. Even teachers create worksheets. Okay, the schools put in a lot of effort. There's a lot of yes. uh, method which goes in. Okay, uh, you, you as a parent may not be aware with the kind of effort put in by schools schools and teachers especially schools like sunshine when they create a curriculum when they design a curriculum when they write lesson plans okay the units of inquiry that's a very detailed effort which goes in a lot of collaboration it's like running a relay race and not an individual race okay every part of the component has to fit in properly every player has to do his or her part that's very important and schools collaborate they bring in resources they create that resource OK, which is used and it keeps evolving. If they feel this is this year, it's not working. They will tweak it. So it's not static that you created a book, you have printed it 50 years later, you're using still the same book. It doesn't work like that. OK, so the school would re recommend reading material that can be a book that can be other resources as well. And today there are a lot of digital resources which are also coming up, which are available which schools and teachers can make use of. Deepak ji, you want to add something to that? I think I keep talking about it, so it's better it comes from your mouth. So uh, the parents will be more uh, satisfied because I keep saying that it's not required because learning is, and also one thing I would like to add, learning is a uh, learning we can do as a whole because life is a whole. So we cannot put it in compartments of subjects like math, science, and English. So when we learn as a whole, as transdisciplinary, then it is very difficult to combine into uh, chapters and syllabus. But we make a curriculum which is transdisciplinary. So the unit of inquiry that we do, the PI table that we create is all there with different themes and with different central ideas, the lines of inquiries and how we expand it like Mahesh rightly put in. So much of collaboration happens. We have a collab period for every class every week, maybe two periods a week where the PE teachers come in, the drama teachers come in, the subject teachers come in and subject specialists come in and they all plan the learning together. So it is a lot of effort which is put in and the learning is from experience, from observation and from different sources. It's not limited to, as you rightly said, not limited to one textbook. And that is what have, I've been believing in right from the beginning inception of Sunshine. And for the last 20 years, we have had no, no pet books in the primary section. Sishti, we hope that answers your question. Uh, uh, yes, sir. And I completely agree with this part of collaboration. So which is what I really loved last year when my daughter is, was in grade three, that every subject was covering the same topic in their own 
area so i i do agree to that it's just that i was uh, my my query was on a uh, ref and the teachers are surely creating a very good reference material and yes it did answer my question thank you so much any other question Bal Krishna ji Yes Mr Chodankar you can ask your question Yeah hello sir good morning good yeah morning. i am from the teaching line i am a lecturer i just want to know about this implementation of nep at different levels because as of now there is no much clarity on the implementation part at college level also they are saying it is going to be implemented parallelly so uh, meaning can you just throw some more light on this uh, implementation plan of government uh, whether it is going to be implemented stage wise or at once at all levels okay good question i will take it okay um, now what is happening is as you know education in india is a concurrent subject that is state and central okay so when the uh, the nep has come in every state can take its own measure as well in the roll out of the nep so one of the ways what we are seeing is with the language learning part of it like maharashtra might say we want to do marathi karnataka might say we want to do kannada as a mandatory learning subject bengal may say bengali and so on so forth that is happening already okay we are seeing that second is in terms of the teacher training okay many states have started to make it mandatory so many of the cbse schools and other schools are also doing in our case to become an ib school school need to invest in teacher training okay so that is one area where we are seeing in terms of uh, the subject load is again an area where schools and colleges have started to look at it very very seriously now just to share with you since i think you are teaching in a college uh, what is happening there what i am seeing is the academic bank of credits which are coming in okay so what will happen is uh, you students can get credits okay when they move from one university to another one college to another and from undergrad to uh, graduation that would also happen okay also where we are seeing some push is also in terms of school school students taking some of their credits which are transferable to as they go along okay you would have also seen that if you study say for one year in a college you will get a diploma and so on so forth okay you have a three year degree you have a four year degree and which is there okay so that implementation is happening already okay there is much more clarity uh, it is at also the school school leadership level the college leadership level and the university leadership level at what stage are they ready what we are seeing is that some schools some colleges some universities are progressing far ahead with the nep roll out some are not yet sure how to go about it that's the honest state of affairs uh, yes sir thank you uh, for answering that thank you i will just like to add a little what i have been seeing in the national associations uh, as you rightly said is a concurrent subject there have been small small things which some states have taken a lead and done it but some states are still just become making it a making a political statement that's all and in the higher education has been so deep rooted that to change the mindset of the educators and to change the mindset of the administrators it will take a little longer time than the school education because school education is much more easier to change uh, if you remember in the past we had cce when the government launched cce we took a couple of years and then we had to roll it back because the most of the people in the government sector or the government schools were not wanting to do it or not ready to do it so the national education policy is not only dependent on private schools or the schools like ours but it is for masses and in general so that has to be accepted only then it will move forward and faster for us most of the schools by let's say 5 10% schools like ours have already been working on those lines already and the colleges like you have mentioned those colleges like the ashoka university and the likes 
they've already they are already in those uh, in the making the lead and of doing it already that yes 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 so deepak ji and to the benefit of the audience i would also say that sometimes when it happens the educators right they know what has to be done they have enough gyan they will go and talk in various forums as well but when it comes to doing in their own schools or colleges or something sometimes they are constrained a by their management or b by their own uh, work schedules and all so it is while we want change at a larger level to happen across board sometimes some schools or some institutions take the lead some lag behind so i would like to proudly say that sunshine has been always futuristic and from 2003 4 we have been always looking forward and doing things which cbse did in 2009 we were already doing in 2003 now what nep is proposing now we have been doing it for the last 15 16 years already and with ib coming in and we that's why we took ib because it aligned to our thought process our mindset and our way of education we wanted to give to the education uh, to the children so we are we are already there one more thing which would happen uh, we are talking about nep is uh, the bed the current bed itself would change by 2030 2030 okay that is one major change which is going to come in okay it will become an undergrad degree any further questions we have namaste sir namaste and sir is wanted to ask if uh, children doing ib i mean will they have will they be equipped to answer any competitive exam say like after their 12th or any i mean good uh, can, uh, as, uh, don't mistake me can you name the competitive exam then i'll answer like you have you have uh, cat and all these kind of exams or could be any because a child i mean uh, uh based on the kind of uh, profession they want to so you have various fields for engineering you have you have for mbas and all that so entrance is for that so will uh, or maybe for uh, good question for, i'm uh, happy you're naming after 12th it to... uh, uh. so uh, so i will i will address that directly and indirectly okay so direct answer is ib students any which way do very well in uh, upsc they do very well in uh, SAT, you would have heard of scholastic aptitude test, SAT, right? Hindi. So I, 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 IB students do very, very well in that. Number one. Number two, it's a less known fact that IB students also clear NEET. We also uh, attempt the JEE and so on. Now on the lighter note, right? If it is, if it was the curriculum or the school board which was instrumental in that, then we would not have had quota factory. you would not have had nalanda you would not have had by juice akash cropping up isn't it okay so obviously it is not just the cbse curriculum or an ib curriculum alone okay it is more than that it is the pattern of exams uh, just to share with you ib is objective okay that means we are talking promoting objective learning those are subjective learning so that's why one and just to share with you unlike other boards i don't want to name them you cannot study uh, Three months before the board exam, then crack it. In the case of IB, you need to have two years of study. Okay, so that is very important because we have internal assessments, we have external essay, we have CAS. You are building a portfolio. You are getting ready for life. And I had mentioned earlier in my presentation, we are a very high stake assessment country. We have to reduce that. The dependency on assessments is very very high. Okay, uh, you know we don't know, but sometimes we are spoiling the life of children. too much of assessments too much of testing okay you have so unfortunately be, that is how that is how i mean things go for the yes. after after 12 yes so that's what i'm saying yes uh, with the nep and all uh, the cuet and all the whole aim is to reduce some amount of stress from the testing from the assessment yes to answer i have already answered that ib students are as eligible are equipped to take high stake assessments and the other assessments which happen they crack competitive exams as well just giving you reassurance but i'm just saying that it's not just the uh, the boards alone there are many such things what is uh, which go into cracking and being successful with the high stake assessment we have a huge population let's accept it okay 2 and 1/2 lakh students apply for 9000 seats in the iits okay what happens with the other 1 lakh 41000 
Okay, many of them go on to become successful in other spheres of life. I hope that answers the question. Okay, so yes, yes our students are eligible for those assessments. So please be rest assured. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Mahesh, there is a question in the chat. Yes. Many kids in the school at class six and seven level, uh, the parents are confused as to which board they will take in the 10th. So they may take a CBSE board as of now. And then there's a question that whether it will be beneficial to take the IBCP later on. How will they, they won't there be any confusion? So yes. So they won't be confused. The children will be sorted out when they come to grade 10. Okay, they can take the IBCP or the CBSC, no worries there, okay? Uh, they, they can uh, do the IBCP, which gives them the same pathways, plus allowing them to pursue their passion. That is very important, okay? I think we should all focus on developing well-rounded kids. We should focus on happiness of children, yet transforming them into successful people, successful adults, in whichever sphere of life they want to go to. If they want to become a doctor, if they want to become an engineer, if they want to become a hotelier, if they want to become a sports person or into media or whatever field, okay? I think that's where the focus on focus of IB education is, okay? Uh, developing compassionate, active, lifelong learners will be successful because we are equipping them with the skills of the 21st and the 22nd centuries. Also, I would like to add here that uh, when they come to the 9th and 10th, many schools have been doing this, that they do the PYP, then they do the CBSE, and then finally they go into the IBCP or IBDP. Yes. So it's very, very easily uh, transferred. The, the, the children can easily fit into the curriculum. And more so when the children now in the 6th and 7th, by the time they come to the 9th and 10th, CB, CBSE would have also moved with the NEP in the same direction. So there will be no confusion at all. The line of study will be almost the same. Yes. So good questions overall. So one other question is saying reducing the assessment might lower the quality of graduates. Just wondering. No, uh, I, I would take the other opinion. Reducing the assessment uh, uh, would actually increase the quality. Why am I saying? Because then we are learning for the love of learning rather than for assessments. Exactly, exactly. I also feel the same. You have to learn, you have to study to learn not to answer an exam. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the people answer an exam and then they forget about it, but they don't learn for life. It's not conceptual yeah. learning. It's only theoretical learning for answering yeah. exams. That is the sad, sad status of our higher education, which needs to change at the earliest. So you would have just to add to you uh, what he said, uh, Deepak ji, we have always heard that India is producing degree mills, right? You know, graduate after graduate who are not ready for industry. So I believe that uh, school should scaffold into university life, university life should scaffold into industry. Absolutely, absolutely. It's not just getting a degree, it is getting how to use your education in yes. the real world. And that is why most of the people I meet in CIA or FIKI, they say there's a big gap between industry and academia because children are not ready for the workplace. Yes. Because they're only getting a degree. So I think, thank you very much. It's 12 o'clock and we had one hour of Mr. Mahesh's time from Singapore. Thank you, Mr. Mahesh, for being so kind and giving us this one hour and also coordinating with our team in the last two, three days. And we have taken a lot of your time and this was very, very informative. Most of our parents have understood what IB is all about and what Sunshine is doing. Thank you very much once again from the bottom of my heart for accepting this offer and doing this session for our parents. Thank you, Deepak ji. Thank you to all the parents. Okay, again, I'm saying that, uh, you know, Sunshine School is an IB. What happened? Mr. Mahesh has logged out himself or? Mitesh? He, so he has, so he has left. Has oh, out. but he was, he was speaking already and he left in the middle. Anyways, thank you. Thank you very much parents for joining us on this session. We will have a recording. We have recorded this session and we'll be sharing this on the emails and the WhatsApp group.
it is already on youtube already you can we will send you the link of youtube and you can always share it with your friends and colleagues and also let us have more people learn the ib way thank you very much for having this session namaste and have a wonderful day ahead thank you very much nitesh we can close the meeting Thank you.